We can control our emotions, and sometimes it's really hard to do. Uh, I was talking about this with Brad last week because last week was a little stressful for me. Well, actually, it was the week before. And there are a lot of practices that we can do to help with our anxieties and our emotional state of being. And we're going to talk about some of those today. They help me a lot. They help a lot of people that I know. And the main focus of today is taking a pause. You know, as our emotions rise, like every time we can sit with our emotions, we, we can. We can either sit with them in quiet, we can sit with them in, well, like I like to do is walk. So I like to walk with my emotions and ask myself questions. But if we take a, a moment, like when we see ourselves, as we see ourselves getting irritated, you know, like before we snap at somebody, before, um, you know, Chuck, he doesn't do this much anymore, but Chuck would interrupt me a lot. And I would always have to tell him, well, you shut up, Chuck. Like, just shut up. Stop interrupting me. And But before I would snap at Chuck, I just started to catch myself. I'm like, okay, I don't need to snap at Chuck. He doesn't realize he's, like, overpowering me physically and with his powerful voice because he's just this big old kid teddy bear inside there. Like, I don't need to tell him, will you shut your effing mouth, Chuck? <laughs> I'm trying to I gotta get the sentence out. Instead of doing that, you know, I can just go, Chuck, I love you. Can I finish this sentence? You know, there's a lot of different ways to approach life because we can ask ourselves, you know, am I projecting some feelings or emotions on other people that they don't really have? Like we, we all do that. Like whatever I'm feeling or my experience, and then I see somebody else acting a certain way, I can project onto them something that may not be true. Like they may not be thinking that way. They may not be like all, all sorts of things in life do that. So why don't we just ask, like ask questions and pause all the time. It should be our normal default mode is just, hey, am I jumping to an ir ir like a irrational conclusion? I, haven't, I don't even have all the facts. I don't even know why, uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, Kyle didn't respond to me in a timely way. Oh God, does Kyle not like me? You know, did I do something to piss Kyle off? And then I don't know, Kyle's been in the backyard cutting his grass all day and left his phone inside. You know, we, we do this kind of stuff all the time to ourselves instead of just saying, hey, am I being rational or not? You know, this is a, I, I wish uh, Randall and Kim were here because Kim was talking about how she just got this new job and the coworkers were pissing her off. So she just uh, made a scene and got, got herself fired. And now she has a new job. She's not going to do that, I hope. But it's pretty interesting because sometimes when we get irritated, our tones, our body language, our everything, our whole vibe can create somebody else responding to that in a negative way. So if we are we, can we just ask ourselves, is it my language and my tone and my words and how I'm, uh, am I bowing up to you? Am I, you know, cowering down? Whatever am I the cause? Or do I have a big role in how that other person is acting? And oftentimes we do, even if we don't like to recognize that. Like we just do. We, we also play a part. We can't just automatically blame everybody else because our perception is they pissed us off when in fact we were part of the cause of making the whole damn thing happen in the first place. Like it's just, the way it is. It's, I just believe these tools, if we can just think about this, we have the ability to think. So the infinite, this mother nature has given us the ability to ask questions and just step back. Just step back. You know, physical trauma, this is a big one. You know, whether it's religious trauma, physical trauma, where a lot of people will blame themselves. And we are not our past. We, we are not responsible for how somebody else treated us in most cases. I mean, if we, you know, if I walked up to Chuck and slapped him and he slapped me back, well, I'm kind of responsible for that, right? But, you know, like if, um, if me and Chuck were in jail and Chuck makes me his bitch, you know, I'm not responsible for that. You know, <laughs> like I, I got Chuck raped me. You know, that's not a good, I don't want to experience that, but, but do I blame myself later, right? You know, like, am I, do I then go through life going, you know, being traumatized anytime I see a big burly tough guy, you know, I cower, I get scared. Uh, and I have to realize not everybody is Chuck. 
You know, I am not my past. Not everybody is evil. Not everybody wants to harm me. And most people don't give two shits about any one of us individually anyway. And we like to make ourselves the self-centered thing. Oh God, there's another big burly guy. He's probably gonna throw me down and, uh, and hurt me. That's normally not how life is. It's just not. But we are, we're adding to those uh, fears and anxieties and without pausing and saying, is this a rational thought? Am I allowing my emotions to take me in places that aren't really making sense? Can we sit with ourselves and take a deep breath? Man, can we get angry at others <laughs> when they talk about you? Somebody was here last week and I heard them saying how somebody uh, was talking, uh, this group of people were talking bad about them. And it was kind of irritating them. You know, can we just take a, a pause? Like this has happened to every one of us here. There's some bit, some group somewhere that we know they're talking bad about us. Are we responsible for that? Like, did we do something either negative or positive to cause the other group of people to talk about us? You know, if it's positive, then fantastic. But if um, I did something bad to Thomas and all of a sudden all of y'all started talking about it, well, it's a reasonable thing for y'all to talk about something that I did bad. But sometimes people are just jealous and they're haters and they just want to talk trash. And if they're talking trash, do we really care? Uh, you know, Jim said something to me last week that I think is really important, is that sometimes you just have to be a class act and keep your mouth shut. You just have to be classy. I don't need to respond to a bunch of negative people talking crap about me. We just don't. Even though our natural inclination is to jump up or now it's all on social media now so everybody can just type nasty crap all day. You know, like, <laughs> just get after it. Uh, it's not like when we were kids, you know, if you're gonna talk trash, we're gonna go right up to you and go out in the schoolyard and just start, you know, throwing punches. That, those that days are a little bit gone, which is kind of sad. You know, it's nothing like two guys throwing slugs at each other and then 10 minutes later y'all are hugging because now y'all are friends. I don't know how that used to work. It was just magic. It happened every time. I've never seen it happen a different way. And well, that's unfortunate those days are gone. But how about feeling really ignorant? I mean, sometimes I feel kind of stupid when I don't fully understand something. And I used to really feel this way in school because my teachers told me I would never be able to read properly. And now I think that's really hilarious because <laughs> I, I don't think I know anybody who's read more than me. But I think it's interesting because if we feel stupid, can we ask ourselves why? Like just take a deep breath. Why do I feel dumb? Or why do I feel so knowledgeable about something when really you can't ever be fully knowledgeable about anything? Can we ask ourselves, can you explain this? Can, can you explain to me, self, why do you kind of feel dumb? And then what are you doing about it? Are, are you looking up a subject more? Are you taking the time to remedy that ignorant feeling? Or do you just want to be stupid and always wear a dunce hat? You know, I mean, it's a, it's, these are all emotions that hit us all the time. And this is a big one too. You know, can we take a pause whenever we want to talk to somebody? And most, I think talking to family is the hardest thing to do. You know, you can talk to friends a lot, at least for me, it's been a lot easier to talk to a friend than it is to go talk to your the dad or your brother. Or, or, it just is. I have a brother that I, I love, but I love him from over there because I don't want him really anywhere around me. He told me once that it's a lot harder to talk to the family because you get so irritated so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that, that, that's probably true. But if we just ask ourselves, can, can I have a reasonable conversation with anybody, whether it's a family member or a friend, and I've tried this with my own father a few times, and it kind of sort of works, but not really. But then, you, then I understand, right? I understand the boundaries of how far I can take that. And then I can deal with my emotions about it. I can say, okay, this is the max that this is this a conversation is going to take place is about right there. It's impossible to go beyond that. And then I have to learn how to deal with it by just recognizing that that's life. There's nothing else I can do about it. I don't have to beat myself up and cause angst and say, oh, well, you know, I can't help it. I can't control being, um, not being listened to. 
by being respected. I don't just I don't have to surround myself with those kind of people. That's why I love you guys so much. Like I really I've really grown to love like everyone here except for the new guy. I just met him and I love him too. Uh, we all feel overwhelmed a lot. Like some of y'all watched me and Brad's uh, thing or Thanks Mom podcast, which is pretty fun. Like I had a week of just feeling really pretty overwhelmed, and then I you guys started asking myself why? Like why? Why? Why don't you know how to fix this? Whenever you feel overwhelmed, like you already know. You already know the remedy. You already know how to do it. And then I just forget for a week. You know, I just let life just beat beat me down. And I'm like, okay, this is enough. All right, enough life. Let's sit down and write out what's what's going on. What, what what is happening? What can I do to fix it? What are all the little issues? And then let's just start knocking it out. And then all of a sudden you feel great. <laughs> You're like, oh, all of life's issues are just piling up and, and it's like having a big pile of dirty, stinky clothes that you're just not putting in the washer. You know what I mean? You need to pick it up, separate what goes where, and then throw it in the washer. Let You know, get take, a, take action, do it. You know, it's kind of like the uh, same thing. If we feel uh, out of shape, like I can't remember who it was. I think it was Bonnie that, that said something, no, show off because I was stretching. She said, you show off? I can't do that. I used to could do that. But it, isn't it true that if we just step back and go, uh, but I could do that again. Like I, I should. I should be able to easily bend down and touch my toes so I can tie my shoes. You know, I mean, like it's really, we allow ourselves and our bodies to get so uptight and then we don't even take the time to do little bitty stretches when we wake up in the morning. And then all of a sudden we wonder whenever we're 70, 80, 90 years old, hey, why am I so tight? Why am I having such a problem? Oh, you had, look at that show off. Then you just think, well, maybe I should take a few minutes every day just to kind of stretch and then I can be showing off. Because it's really not that difficult. It's really pretty easy. And I love this one, everybody. I, you hear this especially now. I mean, as we all know, inflation has been going through the roof. It's been crazy. And everybody seems to be broke. And everybody bitches about it. But I hear really few people ever doing anything about it. Like, I don't hear anybody talking about a budget. Yeah, I don't hear anybody talking about what they could do to improve their job status, their career. What can they can do to advance themselves? How could they... Uh, if they're self-employed, how they could find and hire the right people to help expand their business. Like, I, it, it seems like people get stuck in this, this wheel and they don't want to step back and look at the wheel and then see how to add more wheels to it. Like, I, they just don't. Because it's difficult. It's difficult to look at yourself. Because then you then you got to pause, <laughs> take some breath, and then actually look at yourself. Like, why am I doing that? And then nobody wants to go, well, okay, I got myself in this financial mess because I made bad decisions. Nobody wants to say, okay, I made a bad decision. Nobody wants to say to themselves, oh, damn, I really don't budget. I really got to buy everything I see on Amazon. You know, like, I, like we, we have to look at ourselves and take a pause. Or we're just going to be alone because <laughs> nobody's going to want to be around us. And we know a lot of these people. Hell, I've been one of those people. You know, if we want love and we feel unloved, we have to give love, e even when we feel empty. Like, even when we feel bad and we don't even want to, because it's amazing what kind of cycle, what kind of spin that puts on life. Kyle ignored me for about six months. And I felt like I needed to keep giving him love. I don't know what made me feel that way, but I had to reach out to him to give him love. I just had this force. And then all of a sudden, Kyle put into motion a massive, he just turned that massive wheel. It's like uh, the price is right when they spin that big thing, man. And all of a sudden, he just started responding. And then all of a sudden, that wheel started flowing. And all of a sudden, this, this beautiful, like manly friendship started to take hold. You got to give in order to get. We can't get love unless we're giving love. I mean, we can, if you want assholes, then just be an asshole. If you want no friends, then don't reach out to anybody. If you don't want anything, <laughs> do that thing.
It is the strangest thing how life works. You get exactly what you give. If you want more money, figure out. Just focus on that. If you want more friendships and you know, like I knew in my heart of hearts that me and Kyle were like close. Like I knew it. And I did not allow him to hurt my feelings. But I kind of did right at first. I was like, man. And then I started thinking about like this. Take a pause. Ask yourself questions. Why would I feel that way? I haven't done anything to Kyle. Why would I get my feelings hurt? And then I realized that maybe either Kyle just doesn't like my vibe or maybe Kyle just needs a friend and it's tough to reach out to anybody. And now, I, mean, I, I just love Kyle and I know Kyle loves me. And that's a pretty awesome thing. Having self-doubt is a big, big deal. I mean a big deal. Like Jill has been wanting to do a presentation up here for a while and she cannot bring herself to do it yet. Why? Because she's having self-doubt. But why? I mean, Jill is phenomenal. She, everybody likes to talk to her. Everybody likes to hear her. And I've, she's done a couple of interviews up here over the past years and been phenomenal. Why have self-doubt? Why do it? She got in a plane the other day to take her first flying lesson. No fear at all. But stand it up in front of you guys? Well, I think I'll just <laughs> see y'all at the scene of the crash. <laughs> I mean, like, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, we all have our own self-doubts and our anxieties and fears. Can we just take a moment to pause and figure out why? Like, what is overcoming me? This takes practice. It takes practice when you're just balls of anxiety. You have to sit with that. Like, why? Okay, why are, you, why are you popping up anxiety? What are you trying to warn me against? What is happening? And what is happening? Why? And the more you talk to yourself, and the more you take pause, the more you realize that, okay, I'm anxious because of that thing. And then you isolate that thing and you start talking to it. Why? How am I going to resolve that thing? How is that going? How? Like, if you just talk to yourself like a crazy person, all of a sudden you become not crazy. You know, because you're, you're talking yourself through whatever emotion that you're feeling. And all of a sudden that emotion becomes your friend. It's just really important. And this is how most people feel. I mean, we see people like this all the time. I don't have enough time. I never have enough time. I can't get anything done. I'm running around crazy. And if you look at the most successful people on the planet, the busiest people on the planet, they always have time to do whatever they want to do. The most successful people always have time time. Why? Because they organize their time really, really well. Like really well. They can do everything that they need to do. They're not running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. They bam, 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 bam. Here's my list. This is what I need to do. And here I got, oh, somebody showed up unannounced. Hey, I can visit with them for an hour or two. I can, and then I can go right back to bam, 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 bam. And I get everything knocked out. It's just the way it is. And you see who are the most unsuccessful people? The people that run themselves ragged. Just run ragged, stressed out of their mind, running, 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 back and forth, back and forth, here and there, all over the damn place. Why? Because their mind's a mess. They can't keep themselves organized. Their mind is a mess. And we can just take pause. So the whole point of today's presentation is for us just to take pause and if y'all are sitting on your couch at home, like this is a really cool place. It's nestled in nature. We like to walk around barefooted, some of us. Well, me. And <laughs> it is, it's great. We get together and do so many things. And every Sunday is kind of similar, but kind of way different. And we invite you to come out if you have a good vibe. If you have a bad vibe, just stay on your couch. And we will love you from afar. All right, see y'all next time.